They were remarkable. It just filled your whole body. It was absolutely wonderful. I enjoyed every moment, and I want to come back again. We want to be the leader in, in the cultural landscape. The symphony was at one time the Key West Symphony. I am a Key West conch, but I was living in Baltimore and I had started an orchestra in Baltimore, Frederick and Annapolis and realized that I hadn't had any experience when I was growing up in Key West with orchestras and decided to try to start an orchestra in Key West. Being an island that doesn't really have conservatories or any kind of music schools, we had to bring the musicians from around the country and it just uh, took off. It became well known around the country. The musicians loved playing there, loved coming to Key West in the winter. And that's how it started. And um, we were there for 12 years when the board decided that maybe we needed to expand, become a part, more a part of the mainland. And we moved the offices to Fort Lauderdale and have been here ever since. And we now play in Key West we play in Fort Lauderdale, we play in Miami, and in West Palm Beach. She brought the world to Key West for a long time. It shows that not only can this kind of music be embraced, but it's, it's vitally important. Sabrina hires a lot of really wonderful players from all over the country. Musicians want to do their art somewhere where it's all about the heart, it's all about the soul of the music. And when they come here, they're really allowed to do that. They're all coming together as musicians. They're coming together to play one concert of music they love. Sabrina is a great conductor, and that's what really holds everything together. So even though it's different musicians on stage from one concert to the next, she has her way of creating a unified sound and a unified identity for the orchestra, even though it's not always the same people. What's important is that they have immediately a vision of what the piece is going to be about. The good thing about this orchestra is because they're so experienced and professional is that it allows me to immediately attack the core of the music. And honestly, once everyone sort of feels the energy of that, I think that's what makes it feel so cohesive and like one, because they have the idea of what the music really is. It's just a real positiveness too, you know, when they come down, all the politics of being in an orchestra, it's not there. It's just, you're coming down here, you're gonna make music, you're gonna have fun. It's the middle of the winter and you're in Florida and you're able to go to the beach when you're not rehearsing. And I think all of those things make everyone wanna come here and do that. And that's what, in my opinion, is how we make it sound and many people have said that. It sounds like you've been playing together all the time. I mean, if you think about coming to Key West in January or to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, who wouldn't want to come? <laughs> I was lucky that I started the cello at age four uh, because a lot of what I do now is, is instinctual um, and um, it's not something that I have to generate based on thought, it's, it's what I feel and what I think actually comes through uh, and how I play the cello now. Sabrina asked me to come down in 1997 or 98 to do a recital to bring everyone together to form a support system. Um, subsequently, well clearly it worked and uh, I played on her first season as uh, she was the music director of the Key West Symphony. So I was their first, one of the first soloists and subsequently was invited back every other year or so for at least three or four times.
enjoy my experience with South Florida. This is my second time playing with them. And um, Sabrina Alfonso is a fantastic conductor and she's such a nice person to work with and she's always made me feel very comfortable and always let me do whatever I wanted to do, including choosing a repertoire. I was the first concerto soloist in December 1998 when what was then called the Key West Symphony Orchestra gave its first concert with Sabrina Maria Alfonso conducting. Tonight will be the fourth performance and every time I play it I get to refine it based on the previous night's experience. Without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to our composer, Ellen Taffy Swillick, who is the first female Pulitzer Prize winning composer in the country. I've been really lucky as a composer to have long relationships with really fine performers. It goes back to when it was the Key West Symphony, um, and you did my first symphony, which is the piece that won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, so it's been a rather long relationship. This is the greatest music ever written. You want to get it out there. You want people to hear it and love it. We usually did a lot of the Broadway shows, but we're over them. We're full-fledged symphony goers now. In their comments, they were comparing the experience to being in New York uh, or at a, at a major center of uh, culture. Part of our mission and vision is to really be a part of the community and enrich the community through the music that we provide and reach a diverse audience. Since the Florida Phil's demise, there hasn't been that level of an orchestra and we bring that level. We'll have the opportunity to get even better as the communities all come together and really the arts start coming together and have a foundation. The long-term goal is to have a core of musicians that are here with enough work so that this can be their home base and they travel elsewhere for the side work that they might pick up and grow each concert um, season by adding another footprint of four concerts. Every time we add a concert date, that helps us grow. Arts funding so often goes on the chopping block right away because it seems like something that isn't necessary. Um, it is so critical with music education to make sure that we continue to fund it because having an opportunity to learn an instrument and develop a love of music uh, through music education is a critical way that we can keep kids in school and make sure that we keep them on the path to a successful life. Both of us have a real passion to really make sure that the, that the schools and the children have some access in some way. If we can provide it, we've done summer programs and the children go literally from class to class where they do different sort of classes and learn really all aspects of the music. They're going to make a wonderful contribution. They're doing a master class for some scholarship students. They're talking about uh, bringing maybe students to their performances and having before uh, performance activity with the kids. It will be something that they'll have all their life. It's the one language that is for everybody, no matter how old, how young, what country, what culture, it'll touch your soul. For our series of the week that we're here, it's approximately $100,000 just in the core cost of making that happen. As you buy one ticket to sit at one concert, the organization has to raise that 
the, the sale of that seat three times. The ticket sales account for about 25% of the budget and then everything else is raised through fundraising and sponsorship and uh, it is incumbent upon uh, the community that we serve to really step to the plate and support the symphony. For us as an organization, we've had zero funding from the county or the state. So in the last few years, there's absolutely nothing coming our way from those sources. And every time that somebody takes us into consideration in their plans, uh, whether it's uh, plan giving or uh, major gifts or long-term commitments, all of those things are the formula for our success. As a nonprofit organization, the South Florida Symphony Orchestra relies in very large part on its donors. Please join our firm in supporting the South Florida Symphony Orchestra by becoming a member of the Stradivarius Society.